We're going to have a good time tonight, as I had such a great time. Your church, First Baptist Dallas, is incredible. Well, I can't ever have you back again, Gub, because they wanted to make you pastor after last <laughs> Sunday, so we can't have that. Well, after about a week, they would decide they didn't want me there after all. But it really is a phenomenal uh, congregation, has been for a long time, 13,000 plus members. Yeah. But a lot of people across America see you regularly as a Fox News contributor. They know that you're close friends with the president. But in the midst of all of the things that you do, you found time to write an extraordinary book called Choosing the Extraordinary Life. I want to talk about what is an extraordinary life? What does that mean to have an extraordinary life? <laughs> well, it's something other than the ordinary. And you know, Governor, most people are not living an extraordinary life. Uh, I think about the Chicago sewer worker who was asked why he did what he did. He said, well, let me see. I dig the ditch to earn the money to buy the bread, to get the strength, to dig the ditch. And you know, that's how most people, even yeah. Christians, are living their lives. They get up, go to work, come home, eat a little dinner, watch TV, go to bed, and do the same thing over and over again. I think God wants more for our lives than that. And so I took the Old Testament story of Elijah. Uh, the Bible says he was an ordinary person. He wasn't any superhero, no super spiritual guy. He had moments of doubt and disobedience and even depression, and yet God used him in an extraordinary way. And I took the seven secrets I learned from his life so that we can all experience an extraordinary life. Well, I want you to bust some of those secrets and tell us what some of them would be. There won't be secrets after you tell us, <laughs> but, try. but what are some of the secrets of getting there as well, he did? The first thing is determining your unique purpose in life. And I hope we have time to come back to that because God created every one of us with unique gifts and interests for a purpose. Secondly, extraordinary people determined to end influence their culture. Mm. They're here to make a difference. And then thirdly, waiting on God's timing. Sometimes God has us wait. Sometimes we're in obscurity, but waiting time doesn't have to be wasting time, wasted time. And then fourthly, I say, burn the ships. We mm. have to have that moment like Cortez did Burn the did ships, that. I love that phrase. Remember when he set his ships on fire yeah. and saying no retreat yeah. was possible. Burn the ships, decide you're all in for God. And then learn to unleash the power of prayer. You know, uh, uh, prayer is like that uh, electrical socket that energizes us when we put the plug into it. We need to unleash the power of prayer. Then I talk about how to handle bad days. Mm. You know, extraordinary people have bad days or bad seasons of life when disappointments mount up. And then finally, I say an extraordinary life is one that's or is for people who live their lives with the end in view. They realize how limited our time is here on earth and they concentrate on leaving a legacy. And you write about that, I know, in your book as well. Well, you know, you said at the beginning, the first secret was about understanding your unique place. Yeah. See, I think that's very powerful because a lot of people think that if they're not as wealthy as their relatives or their friends, or they're not as famous, or they don't have uh, maybe the same prestigious job, that their life doesn't matter as much. But you're saying that's not the definition of not of at our all. purpose. Now, we know as, as Christians, especially, we all have a purpose to glorify God and to share His love with other people. God has a story He's telling to the world. But, Governor, God has a unique story He's writing in our life to tell His story. And I use that word story as an acrostic for the five ways to know your unique purpose. You know, first of all, the S stands for start with Scripture. Hmm. Now, admittedly, you're not going to find your vocation in the Bible unless you're into shepherding or tax collecting. But reading the Not Bible, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but reading the Bible at least helps you understand God's general principles. The T stands for talk to others. You know, I had a ninth grade speech teacher named Miss Fry. She was a tough old woman. But one day she asked me if I'd stay after class. I didn't know what for. And I'll never forget. She said, Jeffress, you're going to be a preacher one day, and it scares the bejeebers out of me because you could sell anybody anything. But she was the first person, hmm. Governor, who envisioned for me that I would be a pastor and a preacher. Talk to others. They can help you understand your uniqueness. The O stands for obey your passions. Hmm. You know, God gives us unique desires. I mean, he gave you an interest in broadcasting and in government and uh, politics and the church, and he used those passions for his unique purposes purpose. So obey your passions. Or recognize your unique gifts and abilities. What do you do that seems to come naturally? What is it that when you do it, other people say you were born to do that? And then finally, the Y stands for yield to God's leading. Once you know what that purpose is. Uh, speaking of a life that, that you're doing, 
you have an extraordinary relationship with the president. You talk to him regularly. He listens to you. Um, well, let's don't go too far. Well, but I mean, he does. <laughs> Tell us something about the president that you have learned in your relationship with him that most people do not know. First of all, he's extremely intelligent. I mean, people, you know, want to paint him in the media as a know-nothing or a bombastic, uh, out of control. You don't become a billionaire and president of the United States by being an idiot. I mean, he no, is No, you very, become very somebody brilliant. who ran for president and not a billionaire <laughs> by being me. That's, that's what happened. But I agree with you. God you know, has a unique <laughs> purpose for your life. And I'm looking for it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to tell our audience, be sure and get the book, Choosing the Extraordinary Life. It's available now at Amazon and other top booksellers. And you can also keep up with Dr. Robert Jeffress and listen to his show, Pathway to Victory, at ptv.org. Now, you can also watch it right here on TBN. And you don't want to miss it. The kind of practical things you heard tonight, you'll get that every single day. You can also learn more about his amazing church at firstdallas.org.